Good day, everybody. Jason here with Learn to Survive. Sometimes things that happen in life get us to thinking. Only really just uh, two ideas, especially us people that do YouTube videos. That's exactly what happened with me. Um, I was absent for a while because of illness and um, then got a phone call that I have a really good friend who's uh, in the hospital and uh, came down to they were going to uh, lose their legs so I went to uh, see them and uh, be there for the surgery uh, for support spent a few days with their family and come home to the house I was broken into. Um, a lot of my gear was taken. Um, this is going to actually take a while to uh, recover and uh, rebuild because... You know, but simple fact, bug out bags are expensive. You know, the items that uh, are contained in them and everything. And uh, not only did they take uh, our bug out bags and a few other items, they also pretty much trashed all my clothes. And, uh, we have an idea of who it is. No, it's just a matter of catching them, uh, with anything to get anything done about it. But anyway, I'm not here to complain and bitch about that. That got me to thinking and... everything so I actually wrote my thoughts down on this one so I will be looking over towards this every now and then yeah bug out bags really a prepper's best friend everyone should have a plan to use it and know how to use it and know how to use the stuff that's contained in it. but then that brings us to a question of where to keep our bug out bags now, I know in a perfect world, everyone would have more than one bug out bag, but it gets very expensive. And for most people, having multiple bug out bags to store in multiple locations is not possible. So here's the ideas that I've had because of this uh, break-in that I thought. Now the first place most people keep their bug out bags is home now. This is a logical place and it's a good place. But are you always going to be home when shit goes down? Most likely, anything that goes down is going to be early morning, midday, while everybody's at work. And unless you are going to be in a situation where you're fortunate enough to get home to get to your bug out bag, might not do you any good in that situation. Um, vehicles. A lot of people like to keep them in their vehicles, and this is a great idea. You got your bug out bag in your vehicle. It's always with you. You're at work. It's in the parking lot. You're at home. It's in the driveway. You go to the store. It's in the parking lot. It's always with you. Um, some people like to keep their bug out bags at work. This is not a bad idea either. But that goes back onto the principle of 
being able to afford more than one bug out bag. You've got one at work, you've got one at home, you've got one in different areas. Now this one will sound kind of weird, but it's self storage, public storage. Should be a good place to keep a bug out bag and keep some other items. And it does have a lot of benefits to it because they're fairly secure, moderate, moderate security. Um, and there's a trend for more and more indoor facilities that are climate controlled. That would ensure your gear is always capped at a decent temperature. You know, stuff's not going to go bad, especially if you got foods and other things in your bug out bag. Now this one here is my personal favorite, caching. This is a great way to hide your stuff. You have several options when caching anything away. Uh, caching's been used for hundreds and thousands of years and it's a proven method. Now there are some drawbacks to these methods and there's a lot of risks with each one and that's what I'm going to go over here. You know, so bear with me. And with risks, um, you have your bug out bag at home. What's the chances of you uh, being home when something goes down um, that you need to grab this bag and go? The fact your houses aren't safe anymore, really. Um, it's just break ins and people looting now. And taking stuff for whatever reason is bad enough as it is. Cars. The carborn bug out bag, as much as I like this idea, has its own set of problems. And that's the temperatures of the car. You got your heat, you got your cold. It's going to cause many things to deteriorate quickly. And a car's really not that safe. There again, just like a house, um, cars are stolen quite frequently. And if not stolen, broken into for uh, small items, change, CDs, anything that can be uh, sold and somebody generates some money for. So a car's not exactly the safest place. Work. If you work in an office, it is possible to keep a bug out bag there. Um, if you work in a factory, you know, not so much. But there again, the drawback to this is if you work in an office, you've got cleaning crews. How trustful are they, your cleaning crews going to be? Are they going to find your bag and look through it and take items out of it or just take the whole thing? So, you know, that's a, a problem within itself. And. You know, but still one of the more safer places. On to my favorite caches. I love caches, as I said earlier in the video. This is probably my all-time favorite. Now, some of the drawbacks to caching gear is, one, location. Where are you going to put it to some expense involved with it um, watertight buckets building PCV uh, waterproof uh, tubes to keep stuff in um, waterproof cases um, whatever have you is one thing um, as far as Temperature goes underground, you're pretty safe. Temperature's pretty regulated all year round. Um, so you're not 
going to <coughs> have that issue of things deteriorating, but it's still going to be something that you're going to uh, have to check on every now and then, depending on what you've got cash and how you cash it. And there are several ways of cashing items. This is another benefit from it. You can bury it. Can be put in an abandoned building. There, there's some risk with that, unless um, you have a way of hiding it in a wall or something of an abandoned building um, on top of buildings. Um, feasibly possible if you have access to uh, rooftops of uh, buildings to cash something up there. There's a lot of ways, a lot of places that you can uh, cash stuff away. And uh, if you think about it, it's going to uh, be endless possibilities of where you can stash stuff. And as I said earlier, ultimately in a perfect world, we could have multiple bug out bags. But most of us don't have the type of money it takes. So what I have done, and I've done this for a long time, I have a distinct difference in bug out bags and get home bags. Um, some people consider their get home bag the same thing as their bug out bag and not a good idea. So my approach is a linear approach. I have a bug out bag. I have it in a location. Then I have a get home bag that goes everywhere with me that contains items I would need for three days. I'm not going to go through and list everything I've got in my get home bag because each person has to decide what they need in theirs, although there's going to be a few givens that every bag should have and, you know, like fire starting, water, food, um, shelter, you know, stuff like that. But then you can expand on it to meet your needs. And that bag is a linear bag to my bug out bag that's designed to sustain me for three days to allow me to get to my bug out bag. And if it takes me three days to get to my bug out bag, there's a severe problem. And if something happens and I couldn't get to my bug out bag, even with this get home bag, I still have enough to start me out and the items that I would need to start out with to survive where I could use my skill sets and improvise what I don't have because it's not feasible to put into a get home bag and allow me that time to improvise them things and to scavenge and forage other items and give me more of a chance to survive than I would have without it. And hope for the best. Now I'd like to remind everybody, get home bags and bug out bags are your best friend. They're great to have, everybody should have them. But having all the gear in the world does not ensure your survival. Knowing how to use that gear 
having the right gear, having the right gear for your environment, having the right gear for time of season, having the right gear for all seasons, and a bag will increase your chances of survival. But in the end, it's not the gear you have. It's your skill sets that make survival possible. Gear makes certain things easier. Easier to do. Easier to accomplish. And in some cases, comfort. But in the end, it's your skill sets, it's knowing how to use the gear, and knowing that in the end, gear wears out, gear fails, your skill sets come into play and you have to improvise. Knowing how to improvise and knowing and being able to think outside the box makes a big difference in survival. But in the end, survival of anything, whether it be a natural disaster, whether it be shit hitting the fan and things going sideways, what have you, is 80% luck. It comes down to, is it your time? And sometimes having all that gear in the world and having all the knowledge in the world will prolong the inevitable, but it's still your time. With that, take care of yourself. Take care of one another. I have got a lot to do. I have... Uh, uh, a friend given me a uh, few items... Um, to help uh, start me rebuilding that I've got to go pick up and I've just got uh, so much to do I've got to find a way to get uh, some winter clothes going here and everything else and my cats are having a heyday over here they're <laughs> totally going retarded very entertaining uh, sorry about that distraction folks but um I had to get stuff together and uh, got a lot to do, but I will be putting out videos hopefully every day again, and I will talk to y'all later. Take care of yourself, take care of one another, and be good.